So what is it like to live here in Virginia Beach? What's the weather like? Is it hot? Is it cold? Do you have four seasons? Let's talk about it. Hey, welcome back to the Living in Coastal Virginia channel. My name is Dan Inman and we talk everything live, work, play in the Coastal Virginia area. So if you're new here, you can hit that little like button down at the bottom so that the algorithms of YouTube know to put more content like this in front of you. But if you actually want to be subscribed to the channel and get it into your feed, then you can hit subscribe with the little bell notifications and you can see all of them or you can let YouTube do its algorithm thing and put the ones that it thinks you're gonna like in front of you. Um, but we're here to talk about the weather in Virginia Beach. Actually, pause, because I see Sean out of the corner of my eye eyeballing me. Uh, as much as we like making this content, we'd love more to help your family and your real estate needs. So if you're moving in or out of the area, that's what we do on the daily basis. I'm on the real estate side, my wife is on the mortgage side, and we work in conjunction to make that process as easy and smooth and seamless as possible. So give us a con give us a contact, give us a call. All of our contact information should be down below, uh, and we'd love to hear from you. But hey, you came to this specific video because you want to know what the weather is like here in Virginia Beach because maybe you're considering a move. So let's talk about that. First and foremost, I think one of the first questions most people are gonna ask is, does Virginia Beach have four seasons? The answer is kinda sorta. Um, Virginia Beach being along the coast is kind of insulated a lot more than our than winter, say in like Richmond or DC or any of that area. Uh, I have good friends that live inland and when it snows, it snows there. Here in Virginia Beach, we get basically a dusting. Spring and fall, basically the same and then summers are hot. That's about as simple as it's gonna get. We're gonna go in a little more depth though. So let's talk about summer. Summer alone is probably the main reason why people are moving to Virginia Beach is because they want access to the beach. Um, this also correlates with the highest humidity and heat, which makes sense. Um, but the peak humidity season is gonna be between May and October. The really the high high is gonna be to July, uh, June, July, and August. Um, it is in the middle of July as we are filming this, and um, the other day it was, what, 89, 90 to something degrees outside? But it probably felt like it was 130 billion because the humidity was ridiculous. Um, you can go from a nice air-conditioned building, you open the door, and it literally feels like someone's throwing a wet blanket over your face as you walk out the door. Would you agree with that, Sean? Yeah. It is like, one of the downsides of Virginia Beach is that when it's hot and humid, it is miserable. Um, it makes me not want to go to the beach. However, on the days where the humidity is a little bit more tolerable, even on a 95 degree weather day, beach is absolutely fantastic. So in my opinion, it's totally contingent on how much humidity is outside. Just, just as an example, this last weekend for 4th of July weekend, we had um, a lot of people over at our house and uh, I want to say it was like 85 degrees. The humidity was super low and we were able to go outside all day long, we left the back door open. We didn't need to have AC that bad. It was actually quite enjoyable. And you could stay outside and not have these massive sweat pit stains that come along with the high humidity days. Rolling from summer into what I would call are, in my opinion, the best seasons that Virginia Beach has to offer. I love spring and I love fall. Now spring does come with pollen. And when I say pollen, when the pollen dumps here, it dumps, meaning there is yellow everywhere. Um, you're going to need to wash your car two or three, four times. I happen to be kind of sensitive to the pollen, so I'm sneezing all over the place. But once that kind of pollen dump is over, spring is phenomenal here. I absolutely love it. There's tons of trees locally, like uh, the magnolia trees and crepe myrtles uh, that bloom during that season. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the weather typically is somewhere between the low 70s to mid 80s. Humidity is still relatively low, and that season is absolutely wonderful barbecue and being outside. 
fall is basically the same thing except that the leaves turn uh, the colors that they turn and um, it's low humidity and fantastic outside. Uh, one of the things I think is actually pretty cool about our area, not necessarily Virginia Beach, but we're driving distance to the Shenandoah Valley. And when the leaves turn there, there's tons of, um, I don't know, what's the name, Sean? When Foliage? Well, the specific. You have evergreen and... There's whatever that is, where the trees that change the colors. Um, and it, people travel from all around to go drive Skyline Drive just to experience that season from when the leaves are changing. It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, another great reason to live in Virginia Beach is you can drive to, to Skyline or Shenandoah Valley and go camping and the weather is absolutely wonderful. So what about winter, Dan? Well, um, like I was mentioning earlier, there we, yes, we do have a four, full four seasons here. However, what I would say is that winters can, the, the most severe winter that I've been here is it got down to like the low twenties and then um, maybe had 10 inches of snow. And that was like the worst of the last 15 years that I've lived here. Um, I will say because it doesn't snow very often here, if, if it does snow, which is mostly December, January, and February, um, that the school systems basically shut down. I've had school get canceled for my kids just on the rumor of snow, right? And it snowed and melted on the street the next day and the kids were you know, ecstatic because they got a full day off when there was no snow. Um, the other thing is, as for our area, is we don't have a ton of snow plows. So if we do actually have a snow and it's severe enough to stick, we actually have to import or call upon neighboring cities to bring in snow plows to clear those roads. So you could actually, if you have a decent downpouring, have school off for two or three days. Um, so gotta be prepared for that when you live here. I will say that one of the downsides of um, when it does snow here is there's not a ton of hills. Uh, the biggest one that we have in the area is Mount Trashmore and you're not allowed to sled down there, mostly because it's actually a pretty steep hill and it only goes out for so far before you start running into stuff. So they've made it, uh, they've prohibited doing sledding there. There are some local parks um, that you can go to to do that. Uh, we've taken our kids when it has snowed, um, but there really isn't much when it comes to it actually enjoying the snow when it actually happens. Uh, but pro is that we're about three and a half hours to four hours from the Appalachian Mountains. Um, so you have Wintergreen and a couple other resorts where you can go and ski there. I have a couple of buddies that have uh, gone up there every single winter to go skiing. So if you do want to enjoy the snow, you're not all that far from enjoying a place where you can actually go snowboarding and skiing and sledding. So let's talk severe weather. Now, when it comes to tornadoes, you know, those can happen. And most of the time they only actually happen when we have a hurricane or a tropical storm coming through the area. It is coastal of Virginia. So uh, anything along the coast, you need to be prepared for hurricanes. Hurricanes cause billions of dollars of damage every single year. I've been very fortunate in that out of the 15 years that I've lived in Hampton Roads, I've never had any major damage from a storm. Have you Sean? I mean, I've seen trees fall down. I've heard stories of people, you know, um, causing a lot of damage. I have a buddy who's in the tree business, and so he gets phone calls out the wazoo when those types of things happen. Um, but it is definitely, if you're going to live in coastal Virginia, you got to be prepared that there are hurricanes that can happen. And they happen once a season or once every other season. Uh, when I first moved here in the Navy back in 2002, um, we had Hurricane Isabel that came through. Uh, I actually showed up to the squadron and then a few months later we were, uh, I was voluntold uh, to go on, uh, take the trip. So we were basically going to fly the helos out to Tennessee to get them out of the area. So the expectation was that it was going to be this monstrously disastrous storm. It, you know, it did damage, but it didn't do as much damage as, as we thought it was going to do. Uh, but again, if you're going to live on the coast, you got to be prepared for hurricanes. Uh, there are hurricane evacuation zones, so you may want to look that up before you get here. So as you're looking for homes, you may want to be in a specific area that has an evacuation zone one, two, or three, or four. Um, and then um, that is directly correlated with the elevation of the area. So you can kind of see, you know, which areas are lower lying, which ones are have a little bit more elevation to them. Um, we definitely bought in, uh, a whole house generator with our next last house, um, totally worth it because uh, most of the power lines in Norfolk and some of the older parts of the city have power lines and they're not buried underground. So on occasion, you'll get a you know strong wind or a tree that knocks those down and your power will go out. 
So having a backup generator can be super helpful. One of the other things I think is worthwhile um, investing in is they make these like food buckets where you can buy, you know, storage food. So if, you know, again, if the power lines go down, if something blocks from food and getting into the grocery stores, that type of thing, it's going to be good to have um, non food that, or food that's not spoilable that you have access to. I recommend buying a few of those buckets and putting them into your you know, storage just in case. So when I actually moved to this area, I moved here because the Navy brought me here. Uh, my wife moved here for a job opportunity from Indiana. I moved here from Texas. So my idea from heat in Texas is it's much hotter, much hotter, but less humidity. Uh, Rachel moved from you know the, the Midwest, and so she had her expectations there. All that being said, uh, we've stayed in the area for a reason. We actually really love it here. Um, that Although the summers can be brutally hot and humid, uh, the times that you do go to the beach and are able to enjoy it, you know, as long as you have sunshade, it's not all that bad. And you can also jump in, you know, obviously the ocean to cool off. It's a wonderful area to live. Spring and fall, fantastic, the fantastic seasons. As long as it's not rainy and drizzly or the wind's not crazy high, when it's on a, you know, 70s to 80s degree, you know, day with low humidity, it's wonderful outside. Uh, the winters are kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes it's like, this last winter was just every single day was somewhere between 35 and 45 and drizzly and kind of gray out. We've had seasons where the entire winter didn't seem like anything but an extension of fall. And we've also had winters where we've gotten 10, 15 inches of snow. It's worth it. Um, we absolutely love this area. We love the weather um, and we have access to the Outer Banks. You have access to you know skiing and the, the trails that are there. Um, we wouldn't change it for the world. So, hey, if you want a, sp a place that you can come and, you know, you have mild winters, you have access to the beach, and the springs and the falls are absolutely fantastic, this could be an area for you. Hey, was this content helpful? Do me a huge favor, hit the like button. It lets me know that I put out content that you actually enjoy. And the algorithm will try to find more like it and put it in front of your face. And uh, you can hit the little subscribe button. It'll let you know when we drop new content, both on Mondays and Fridays and occasionally on a random day. Um, and uh, yeah, as much as I love making this content, I'd love more to help you with your real estate needs. I'm on the real estate side, my wife's on the mortgage side, and this is what we do on a daily basis. All of our contact information should be below and you can get a hold of us there. We'd love to hear from you. Take care.